Hi, I'm Andy from Steinberg and I'm happy to be here at DV247 today to talk about seven of the new features that are included in Cubase 7. So on this website, uh, you'll find seven feature videos uh, that offer you some, some insights and also some tips and tricks into things like the new Mix console, the customizable new console that's in, inside of Cubase, uh, the new channel strip, the new plugins that are always included in new releases, um, things like the new chord track and chord and analyzer, the harmonizer, which allows us to harmonize audio and MIDI files, and a basic general overview of all the new exciting features that we've included in the box. So check them out, I hope you enjoy them. Okay, so in addition to the new um, channel strip that I've just shown you with the, I guess the new plugins that we've just run through with the tape saturation, the ability to apply them over the top of individual channels, just there, scroll down. What we've also got inside Cubase 7 is a, uh, a completely new I guess EQ module based on our studio, um, our studio EQ rack. So if we click on it, you can see that it basically gives us a frequency spectrum. So I'm looking at it over the top of my master channel here. The brilliant thing about this is I can analyze any frequencies that are actually sticking out. I can highlight them and then I can do things like invert them or move them around. At the moment, I'm just applying a low cut over the top of my master channel to remove all the low end rumbles and anything that can be affected as I start working with dynamic processing um, over the, as I move through the actual uh, channel itself. So this is over the top of any channel. So I just double click on it and I can instantly get it up and draw in my EQ curves. So the good thing is it's not just in our mixer. If we go to our channel inspector, you can see here we've got the frequency curve again. So in addition to the channel strip, if we turn those guys on, we can also start working with our EQ and once again really find those troublesome uh, EQs or just add maybe a bit of high end over the top of our mix. Okay, so in, in addition to the EQ, if I go back to my mix window, you'll also see that if we go to inserts, we've got a new feature or a new plugin that's really, really handy for mixers. So I'm just going to drop this down a little bit and click on the brick wall limiter. If I open it up, you can see it's a brand new limiter inside of Cubase. Now the, the most important thing about a brick wall limiter is getting rid of those transients. So we, we might have a few annoying transients just sitting over the top of our mix. So it might be, you know, a couple of hi-hats or a, a troublesome snare. All we need to do is just to apply a little bit of a limiter and that'll knock it down a few pegs. So then we can actually add maybe a compressor over the top with sort of a mid attack on it and a, and a, and a nice release and then start working through with EQ, you know, uh, spatial dynamics, and then also down the bottom, maybe add another brick wall limiter just to get, to maximize the most out of that volume. The other thing we've got is in the channel strip. So if I go back to this, and this is more talking about our master channels if we want. So if we click on the channel strip, if I increase that view there so that you can actually see it, um, we can swap from our brick wall limiter over to a maximizer very easily. So if we click on that, we can maximize our track. So it's not really set up there, but at the moment you can see, if we drag that back up here, uh, up to here, you can see that's, even with the volume or the fader set at minus nine, it's still boosting that track's volume up to a reasonable level. So loads of new dynamics that allow you to not only control, I guess, uh, individual tracks, but do things like remove transients on your master track and help you get more of a mastered sound out of the, the collective, or I guess the collection of all of the instruments that you've tracked and mixed. 